and from the last one that I needed to lighten up. Hi <laughs> guys, oh, sorry about that. Gail was just telling me what his mom told her to do. Okay, hope everybody had a great weekend. Thank you everyone for tuning in. So this is me and Gil, both of ours. Uh, come in a different space when it comes to HR. So Gil has a company, Employee Experience Design. He helps companies with everything to do with the employee experience. Uh, my company, HR Superhero, we help small, medium-sized businesses with all things to do with HR. Um, both of us are collaborating due to COVID-19 to help as many businesses as we can during this most difficult uh, time. So we want to help small business uh, companies, we know, we understand you're the uh, our backbone of our economy and we want to help you during this difficult time. So every weekday, every day, Monday to Friday, we're going to be doing live segments here on LinkedIn, talking about different topics. And today we're going to talk about remote work. Um, both of us are going to give uh, some tips and advice to business owners, or any company, it doesn't have to be small, medium-sized companies, but I think this segment uh, will benefit every organization because a lot of organizations are going through um, transition right now, huge transition for some companies going into remote work. Um, so we're gonna help give some tips and advice how you can do this very smoothly uh, given the fact that this might be a quick turnover, some companies did it overnight, but still, we're still going to provide tips. Doesn't matter if you're already implemented it or maybe you're looking to implement it. The segment's actually for all companies to help you transition through this smoothly. Um, so, me and Gail are going to talk, but I'll let uh, Gail go first on the employee experience side, given that the companies are moving so fast. A lot of things probably will fall through the cracks. So what can companies do to ensure that they still uphold the employee experience during remote work transition? Uh, so thanks, Rupreet. Uh, so the first thing I really I want to talk about um, is actually around best practices that we've seen a million and ten articles and ideas about what are the best practices for remote work. And I, I want organizations and people to be, look at those with a critical eye, because just that something works for another organization or another person doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So for this remote conversation, I decided to put on a button down shirt to go with my sweatpants. Um, because a lot of people are continuously recommending, oh, you have to dress up and you have to dress nicely as if you were going to the office. Uh, I believe you even had a post similar to this that it yes. that doesn't work for everybody. That isn't, that isn't necessarily accurate. So that's just one example that when you're looking at best practices or what's worked for other people, look at it with a critical eye because that doesn't mean that that's going to work for you and you need to adopt and adjust these best practices for what's right for your organization. I know for me, I've been working at home 18 of my 20 year career and 18 of my 20 year career, I've been in sweatpants. And for a lot years? of people, <laughs> pardon? 18 years, you've been working home from 18 years? Uh, yeah, I worked for the wow. first 15, uh, for the first um, 17, 18 years. And now for the last six months of my career, I was just always working from home when I wasn't at a client. Obviously, when I was at a client, so I was you, dressing nicely. You are then. I didn't know this part. Uh, so you're pretty much. Sorry, I, it cut out on me that I'm pretty much. Oh. What's that? We cut out. I'm like, I, I guess. You've mastered this then working from home. I didn't know you worked from home for 18 years. It, but I found I found my way. Over the years, I had to adjust it. When I when I first started uh, my career, I was 23 years old and I was comfortable working from 11 o'clock at night till seven in the morning. And then over time, and, and I was able to be productive and disciplined and creative and all of those things uh, while doing it my way. And I did it on the couch, despite what you're not supposed to because of your back. That one, I will say, is, is a good best practice because just the couch will destroy your back. I'm comfortable on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, couch, the couch will hurt your uh, back. But it requires adjustments. And I mean, I think that's really the biggest thing is that it requires the adjustments that make it successful for you. For some people dressing up, they need they feel the need to dress up. I, w I was explaining this to my wife this morning. She was she was stunned by that because if she were working from home, she would never be dressing up. 
but some people they prefer it that way and we can't just take the best practices from organizations that were born remotely or for people who have been doing it for years we have to find the right way for us yeah i and that was my post yes uh, yes yes my post was actually more about on um because there's, there's a lot of posts out there saying uh doesn't need a space actually my post was like no, you don't need a space. You don't need to designate a space. Not everyone has the luxury to designate a space. Um, so now when we read things like designate a space, and what if you can't? Some people may go into anxiety or get overstressed about this. Well, I can't designate a space. So that means I can't be productive. So my post was actually about, no, you don't need a designated space. Um, not all of us have the luxury. Um, so find what works for you. You and I, me typically, like I've been working from home since 2013, and I work in various. I think I there's not even one space in my house that I have not worked from. I work from everywhere. I like to move around, and that's just me. I can sit in front of the couch, have a TV on. Um, I can be outside when the weather's nice. I love sitting outside. Uh, so I can work from there for a bit. So I move around. Um, I and I agree with you. So on the dressing, I don't always dress up. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, if I have a call like today, yes. <laughs> but again, I'm just wearing a nice sweater underneath the wearing sweatpants. <laughs> so I don't. I think these things don't matter yeah. uh, at all at this moment or any time. Actually, I think it's just just be productive. And in the end, in the end of the day, it's all about uh, being productive. Find that groove what works for you. And I know the transition is happening so fast. Um, and I think a lot of people feel like they're out of control. Uh, they don't have things in control. Yeah. And that, that's actually a really good point is that we have to recognize what we are and are not in control of. Uh, you know, you mentioned a great point that not everyone has a luxury of just setting aside a space. I saw a picture of one person, their space that they set aside was sitting in the closet because there were other people out in the main area that that was what they had to do. So I, you know, I, I would be loathe to hear of stories of people getting anxiety, like you said, because they can't do what these best, best practices are. You can. Not everyone can, can right? Um, so I that's why I took the liberty of writing that post. That's great. That I love it. Was, no, don't worry about designating a space. It can be uh, simply sitting in your bed and working. Whatever works, whatever works, just do what works for you. Um, yes, things are moving fast, but we might be in the situation for a few weeks or a month's time. Um, so yeah, like just pick a, I think it's just pick a spot that, or move around like I do. <laughs> I do that when I'm talking on the phone, I wander around the house a little bit. Yeah, and then, cute, and then I think the most important part would also be don't forget to take breaks. Cause I think working from home and I've, developed this bad habit is you get, uh, I was talking to a couple of HR people, uh, professionals, and they've experiencing this now that they're working from home. They feel like they're always working. <laughs> yep. So I yeah. think it's important to remember to take breaks and set your time schedule to yep. work. Absolutely. Um, my next thing that I would want to add would be around uh, cybersecurity. That's one thing I don't think mm -hmm. that a lot of organizations are necessarily thinking about right now. But that's something that you definitely want to consider as people aren't necessarily using uh, computers, laptops from work. They're not necessarily using the same tools. Um, and so this is something that organizations really need to consider. Uh, I imagine hackers aren't taking this as downtime because they're working from home anyway. So this is a time where you do still need to consider cybersecurity and going back to uh, for around training is that that you need to train people around that uh, yeah. cybersecurity and understanding what their role is in maintaining that whether they're at the office or not because they don't necessarily have the luxury of being in the office. They may need to learn about VPNs or that kind of uh, thing. I think this is also a great opportunity to don't try to tackle everything yourself uh, because this is security, right? Um, you know, this is one area I think companies should invest. I know there's a lot of businesses that are stepping up to the plate to help businesses right now. Um, so reach out to somebody that's a security expert or organizations or vendors that uh, specialize in remote setup and utilize their services because you don't want to compromise on security um, because we have a lot of hackers. We have a lot of online scams going on. And these guys that are scammers, 
they're going to take full advantage right now because all everyone's being told to work from home. So great point. Like I, I told, yeah, I was, I totally forgot about this, but I think I was talking to somebody last week and I was like, yeah, you're going to think you need to think of all the like, securing your, your organization because com- employees are going to be working from home. Great point. And these hackers prey on fear, right? And everybody's living in a certain level of fear. So they're able to take advantage and find creative ways. I mean, I've seen some unfortunately impressive emails that come from hackers that look very official and very professional. So it's uh, this is something that I think a lot of organizations need to consider. You know what? Yes. Um, this happened to one of my clients a couple of years ago, but this happened to me recently. I was... Uh, this uh, me and this individual uh, were setting up a podcast. I was going to be a guest. So, anyways, long story short, I had the email, and then he messaged me literally an hour, two hours later of our conversation, saying, "Hey, you sent me an invoice. I don't know what the invoice is for." And I'm like, "I didn't send you any invoice." Whoa! I go check the email. I go check the email address. Um, and this happened to uh, one of the Shark Tank. Um, Participant um, oh, Barbara, Barbara yes. uh, happened to her. It ha- it's happening a lot more. You got to pay, I, and it happened to one of my clients too, where his employee thought the CEO was telling him to buy Apple gift cards. And it my just, yeah, the thing was the email. When I looked at the email, we started paying attention. I'm like, yeah, but there has to be something that is off. And when you look at the email, it's always the email. They're off by like a letter. Or something so always pay attention to the email or like verify if it's correct but yes scams are happening a lot more and they're just they're just becoming more and more sophisticated and that's why we have to be uh, wary of that so that was sort of why that came into my head i was figuring as organizations need to move there's just different uh, it practices best practices for organizations to help their uh, data be safe at this point yeah and uh, one other thing I also wanted to talk about is around uh, managers of managers at this point, that the managers of people who are now leading a team remotely, because they are going to be in a completely new world. And if their responsibility is to support this team and provide them an experience, they're they're in the unknown at this point. And so managers of them have to look not just broadly at the business, but specifically at their people. And this is the time not to step back, but a time to uh, step in and lean into helping your managers and helping them understand, not to micromanage them, not to tell them how to do it, but to give them the support that they need to help take care of their people because they have such uncertainty right now that they're also taking on the stress and the uncertainty of their people that they are such a key point for the experience right now that supporting frontline managers is so key to helping their staff through this uh, period. Yeah, no, great points. Um, So on the HR side, uh, there's a few points that I want to mention because I know a lot of companies may not probably will overlook this. And one would be one you touched on was training. Um, You know, not everyone's tech savvy. Everyone's, you know, have different levels of how they're uh, tech savvy or not. So, and I think right now the crucial point will be things are moving really fast, but you want to keep in mind uh, that there will be people that will require training on how to use maybe the smallest And if you have VPN, how to log into the VPN? How do you access your files? Um, and so on. So a lot of transitions happening so fast that where some people might be able to quickly pick up uh, and where some people may need the extra hand holding uh, to get them through this. So I think the best thing companies can do is maybe identify your top three uh, employees that are really good in remote work and make them the training champions so that they can now go and uh, train other employees, especially the ones that may need hand holding instead of trying to get everybody uh, trained at once maybe train your top five individuals that are good in um, working from remote and tech savvy, but also can train employees. And now you can break up the group into various segments. Uh, Because again, there will be some people that can pick it up fast, but there will be some people that will need the extra hand holding. So that's one thing companies can do is training and also identify go-to people 
for this specific matter. Um, second, I think would be to look at uh, cost that this might be costing employees, um, internet cost. But I know uh, in Ontario, Bell, or I think Canada wide, Bell has stepped up to the plate where they're not gonna charge additional usage for internet. But I don't know if all providers are doing this, but that might be something to look at. Phone cost, um, this might be additional phone costs that it's going to cost employees to be on the phone talking to their team members and so on or customers who knows so there's a, a lot of things that we can look at equipment maybe uh your company isn't providing or hasn't provided everybody with laptops now if you're working from home you're going to be using your own equipment and then the security as you mentioned the security now they might have to add additional layer or might have to go and get anti-virus uh, protection but again, these are all additional costs to the employees. So I think looking at might want to keep in mind the cost. Um, I know like somebody reached out to me in, in my network. Telus is offering free business solutions right now for small, medium sized companies or maybe just for every business out there to help them through this transition. So might want to keep in mind the cell phone cost, the Internet cost, uh, the equipment cost that the employees might are taking on a hit gas, uh, Ambridge gas, hydro, because now they're home working. So those just little tiny things, but this still makes it still impacts the employee because now they're consuming additional cost. Um, so cost might something you may want to consider into a factor or give solutions to your employees. For example, set up Zoom. Zoom's, uh, you know, you can get it for 20 bucks a month and you can help all your employees set up their calls through that and they can transition even the customers call on to Zoom. So now it's not costing the employees. Slack is a good communication. So there's a lot of apps and tools right now that are available for employees. Again, a lot of companies are uh, stepping up to the plate. I think I, you want to take advantage of the tools and resources that are available online. Um, third, I would say employee engagement. Um, I think it's going to become very crucial to keep your workforce engaged, motivated, even through this difficult time. So maybe doing little segments throughout the week. I saw some people, some companies have adopted happy hour. I thought it was great. Uh, still connecting on Zoom and having a drink and talking and conversations. You can even do a weekly lunch. Uh, get together on Zoom. You can do virtual parties on Zoom or other platforms. Uh, you can even do, I saw something today where you can even do uh, pajama days <laughs> or teacher days. Uh, so like a spirit week, just trying to get help your employees through this difficult time. And lastly, I think the biggest factor through this whole transition, because no one likes change, but as we talked last week too, we, uh, you know, communication is going to be a really key in through this transition, having patience as leaders, because again, everyone learns differently. And this transition is going to be hard on some employees and, and some employees, it might be just a piece of cake and they can pick it up and move really quickly. So having patience and lastly, trust. As you go into the virtual uh, uh, remote work uh, area, uh, again, this this might be new to a lot of organization and some managers might have anxiety over this, like, well, how do I manage my uh, employees? And they might now be sending 10 hundred emails or 10 emails a day. You got to trust your employees. And if you want to have touch in points, which is great to have like a maybe, you know, once a day, you can do a group meeting call for 10 minutes or 20 minutes just to see how employees are doing. Set up maybe once a week or every other day, touch up points on one-on-one -on -one for 10 minutes um, to see where individuals on your teams are feeling or because some may want that one-on-one -on -one time and they don't feel comfortable talking to uh, all in front of everybody. And I think if you have HR, I think HR will play a really critical role right now where I think HR can really champion um, uh, for the employees and really champion in the communication too wh where you should be touching point with employees and see how they're feeling and try to um, be, do this one-on-one. -on -one. So I think HR, if your organization has HR, I think HR needs to be very visible at this moment where you are touching uh, with 
in the individually with the employees and actually communicating that the employees can come to you for any concern and lastly as a hr employee assistance program um i think again you need to communicate to your employees if you have it uh, why they should use it and the resources that are available to the employees so you hit on a lot of great points there. I want to add uh, particularly on the area where you were talking about communication and how some people are comfortable in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Some people are comfortable talking to their manager. Some people are talk comfortable talking to HR and some people are only comfortable talking to peers and giving everybody and encouraging everyone to have that avenue for conversation, managers having one-on-one -on -one conversations and group conversations, encouraging the team to talk to each other. Um, but also one of the things is the content of the conversations for managers now is crucial. Managers cannot be seen as only focusing on the work and the effort and KPIs. They need to also show understanding at this point of what the individual is going through and they need to talk to them because if they talk, you can talk to a person five times a day and it can be an amazing, positive, enriching spirit, experience. And you, and you could talk to somebody once a week and it could be micromanaging. And it all yeah. depends on how and what is communicated. Because if you're communicating human uh, relationships, understanding, uh, helping the person, facilitating the person's success versus looking over their shoulder and checking in on, you know, how many calls the salesperson has made or anything like that, that will come across even the micromanaging will come across even worse now than it normally does. Yeah. And it's normally pretty bad. No, I agree with you. Uh it is i think everyone's being tested right now um or all, all our limits are being tested uh given the fact you know we're dealing with the crisis and some companies are taking a hit some companies are not and then you've been asked to work from home some companies didn't adopt that yet some companies i know right now are doing it this week they want to you know start moving everybody to um uh, work from home if you can. So yes, uh, working from home is a challenge for a lot of companies, especially if you've never done it. And I agree with you. It might some might be may you maybe you're not micromanaging. Maybe the employees may come across an employee that you are because you're touching with them too many times. Touch in points. Um, I think it's it's more. I think the there's no fine line here. There's no right or wrong solution here. But you got to be able to. I know a little bit harder to do over the virtual world, but the but it's still you can. That's why I think doing Zoom calls or video calls are so important because you can't. I I, I like doing Zoom calls because I also like reading people's body language. You can't pick up a lot of things over just voice. I can, but but again, that's the nature of my work. I can, but still, uh, I think video calls help a little bit. And also, if you do have employee assistance program, encourage employees to use it because not everyone's going to feel comfortable coming talking to the managers or HR or anybody at work. So you give them you a second outlet. Hey, you know, use this outlet. Uh, and some com some people may enjoy working from home. I think there's always a blessing in disguise and everything, but I think everyone should, uh, you can adopt this in a positive way and look at it. Well, you get to work in your PJs. You don't have to commute. You don't have to get up and brush your teeth and, uh, you know, dress up. Well, like that whole process can take someone an hour to do. And I'm with the your kids, everybody in your household. So there's, or do yoga and stuff like that. So, we can turn it around uh, and say, you know what, look at positive things. Yes, things are moving so fast and we're out of control. Uh, things, There's some things that are not in control, but you're in control of yourself. I, and you know, what, right now. that gratitude point, I think, is so key for everybody, small, medium business, entrepreneurs, any large organization, somebody who's unemployed, all of us right now, I think that gratitude piece, because there's so much negativity and there's so much fear and there's so much anxiety going on. And there is, it's a very stressful time in the world right now, taking the time to be grateful for whatever it is that you can be grateful. So if it is working from home and not having to, you know, take the subway and drive for an hour a day or anything like that, whatever 
it is that you can be grateful, try to consciously find those moments and those items to be grateful for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gratitude. I think you just look, I, that's my attitude right now is just look at it in a different way and uh, be positive and make the most of the situation. Yes, yes. Do we have any questions? Uh, let's see. Not really. No, just one person added a remark, which is great. Happy hour engagement. Jason has been playing this with his uh, team on Slack. I can hear the bonding. It's really cool idea to help help employees uh, get comfortable on Zoom. And I can also hear the bonding, which is really unique. That's mm. excellent. That's yeah. great to hear. Okay. Yeah. I've... Sorry. Go ahead. No, I just say, say I've seen a lot of great things going on on LinkedIn around yeah. Zoom and organizations having contests around who has the best and worst workspaces or having company-wide yoga sessions or different things or, or having lunch all together, maintaining that uh, tradition. There's There are a lot of great things. And now it's an opportunity for managers who didn't always think that way to adopt some of these ways to try to take care of their people. Because yeah. like I was saying, there's a lot of stress and anxiety going on out there, but I would be willing to bet that those of us who have great bosses are feeling less stress and anxiety than those who don't. Those who are in a worse situation, those who are at least still lucky enough to have a job, but have a bad boss, there, there is extra stress being added in this situation. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I, I've been seeing that a lot on LinkedIn to the different posts people are posting about what they're doing with their teens. And last week I was saying this uh, to one of my friends. Um, you know what's going to happen is a lot of companies that were so resistant to moving to remote from work. No, no, we can't do it. We uh, no, our organization's not for that. We want all our employees in the office. I think there's going to be a disrupt in the workforce and where a lot of companies now are being forced to do this. I think they're really going to see the advantage side of doing this. And I think they may end up adopting this for company wide uh, forever. So mm -hmm. I think I do feel there's going to be, uh, you know, some now you're forced to do it, but you're also going to see the benefits of this. And I think some companies are probably going to opt out to continue doing remote from work. You know, I, uh, you save a lot of money too as an organization for overhead cost. Um, it's easier on the employees, and you know, work life balance happens. You get to spend some time with your kids. So I think it's a that's why I mean it's a blessing in disguise as well um, on the employees and the company. And I think a lot of companies might just keep this uh, remote to work even after COVID nineteen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is a significant competitive advantage to be found when you do this right. I know a few organizations that have started remote, not all of them necessarily even live in the same country. Uh, I heard of one person uh, who's already had started doing this prior, but uh, building up remote teams so that tech companies don't have to rely just on talent in Toronto, New York, San Francisco, Austin, any of those areas, but they can find uh, tech talent anywhere because if they're able to do that work remotely, well, then you're finding people that you wouldn't have found otherwise, giving you another significant advantage. Yeah, that's that so true. So when, true. One thing I will find I will find interesting after all of this is seeing how I believe some people will self-select away from ever wanting to do remote work again. Because there are some people right now who thrive on the office environment and love the office environment and are genuinely more productive there. Yeah. That will find that they, they they are very excited at the end of this to get back to an office. And it will be very interesting to see certain people yeah. who had never faced this before to learn, yes, this is for me. And now I'm only looking for remote work or no, get me back to an office as quickly as possible. That's so true. Uh, yes, so, so it, this remote, working from home isn't for everybody. Um, and some are going to learn that. and some are we going to learn that they're more productive? You know, when I started working from home, I learned that I was more productive. Yeah. But Me again, too. I'm in a different space because in HR, uh, when I worked in the office, even when I go into the client sites, I'll, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm not that productive, but it's also um, part of my nature is to build relationships with employees. And sometimes you're just burning fires or sometimes employees are just coming and talking to you. But when I'm home, I don't have that distraction. 
where I can produce more or um, I, I still do calls I can tell employees they can call me anytime set up zoom calls um, but I found that I was more productive but then also like the balance of going to work yeah in an office um, so now that I'm a, I run my own consulting uh, business I get that balance like I, I can go in to the client site uh, and I work from home depending on who the client is and sometimes it's just remote depending on the client if they're in the US obviously I'm not going in the <laughs> office um, but yeah like there's a fine balance for everybody and yeah the remote work isn't for any uh, for everyone um, but then it's a nice option to have after COVID-19 to balance Sometimes maybe you need to take your kids to a doctor's appointment and stuff, and now you can uh, uh, have that luxury and that flexibility. Um, so yes, there will be a fine balance, and it'll be yeah. interesting things we're gonna come out of this. But we're out of time. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Gil, thank for you. doing this and collaborating with me. So guys, we'll be on live Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. right here on LinkedIn covering various different topics when it comes to COVID-19 and how organizations can help their employees through this transition and also help yourself through this transition as a business owner or a small business company or any organization. Um, both of us, our clients are small, medium-sized companies and hence why we wanted to do this. We want to help as many small businesses during this uh, crisis moment that it's going on in the world. Um, so join me and Gail every day at 11 a.m eastern time if you have questions for us reach out to us individually or you can write comments on our uh, our post about this because we want to collect as many topics from you or questions you have so that when we come on these sessions we can answer those questions um, prior to the segment um so if you have questions or if there's topics you want us to cover please join us or send it to us and we'll answer them here and join us uh, every day monday to friday uh at 11 a.m so gil do you have anything to add no thanks everyone hope to see you tomorrow okay see you guys bye